Okay, big day today. It's the Mysterious Benedict Society season finale. I was pretty excited for this one because some of you might know I mostly enjoy this series. Despite all its flaws, some dull characters here and there, it's not a perfect series. But it has been in an upward trend since like the fourth episode. The series was pretty consistently good from episode four through episode seven in my opinion. The negatives really got overshadowed by its strengths. The world building, the plot got more interesting, all that. This final episode and stay with me here was a pretty mixed bag. Hi, Disney Plus watchers, this is Thoughts After a Disney Plus Watch, where we review everything new Disney Plus coming out, and I'm glad you're watching. This is a channel that's specifically about movies, shows, and all that's Disney Plus original stuff. So just a fair warning here before we start, I do want to discuss spoilers to really do this episode justice, so you can press that watch later button if you haven't seen the finale yet. Still here? Let's go. So this episode had a lot of moving pieces, and the first half was pretty exciting. Mr. Curtin finds out about Kate Wetterall, Mr. Benedict and his companions crash in on the island with only one mission, get these kids off the island. ASAP. Rainy, Sticky, Constance and Kate are trying to come up with a plan to overthrow the improvement situation, you know, the thing that is coming, and pause. Because again, the first half of this episode did do a good job of making me warm up to the idea of a big confrontation in the second half of the episode. Again, Kate gets exposed to Mr. Curtin, Milligan's trying to stall for time, also a scene I really enjoyed because it showed once again how smart Mr. Curtin is, how he can see through people. I'm really impressed with Tony Hale in this role and he shined in this episode big time, but what I was saying, the scene where Rainy and friends are discussing how they should infiltrate the tower was, for me, the first warning sign that there is something wrong and that I was bound to be disappointed by the finale. Why? Well, remember the first episode of this season, them going through all the puzzles, the cryptic rooms, ultimately having to work together to make it and figure it out? The show gave us a little bit of a promise there that these skills would become the key to victory within this show. But fast forward episode 8, what are we doing? Maybe we throw some acid on his feet, oh maybe I can make him laugh, hmm, I know they are desperate and that the clock is ticking and please do note that I haven't read the book so maybe this was like the way it was written but even that wouldn't be an excuse because you're free to change things in an adaptation but okay never mind but this is what the show is giving us setting up these extraordinary group of kids who are destined to destined to winging it and bringing some acid with them and hope that the twin brother also suffers from narcolepsy this episode was chock full of unearned payoffs and the worst offender and I can't believe how awkward this made me feel but Milligan is apparently Kate's father or maybe he's a stepfather or something we don't know for sure but I think he's her father but having these supposed to be emotional scenes between them came from nowhere am I completely blanking out on previous hints within the show that these two are related Milligan having no memory and maybe having a dark past that was clear to me but there wasn't anything going on between these two during the show because they were in completely different places and I also can't remember anything from the start of the show please enlighten me if I'm forgetting something Milligan shouting go Katie cat while he's lifting her up to the top of the tower and Kate having that short flashback and thinking I remember how his arms felt it was was B movie level bad and came out of nowhere and I really dislike stuff like this because this show shows so much promise all the way through and it's still enjoyable but damn things like this drag it down and damn it they had a chance last episode to foreshadow anything but they didn't it was just about Kate you you hanging on the cliff you could have died and oh by the way I have orders from Mr. Benedict to get you out of here they talked about a lot of stuff but not anything about their past like oh I don't know that flashback was clearly hinting at father daughter having a swim together by the waterside so you gotta freaking chance to have flashes of their past return in that scene last episode because they are right there by the water side. It's such an easy win to have them like both confused right there because they can't describe the feeling while looking at the water, slowly some flashbacks coming in, stuff like that. But no, this scene, this right here, this was about the bucket that Kate lost. There's nothing set up here. Having this included is partially fixing this extremely awkward payoff that is just, you know what I'm gonna, you, you know what I'm gonna move on, enough about this. Let's quickly go over a few things, uh, a few of the beats within this episode that are really good and I really enjoyed. Mr. Curtin interrogating Kate and Martina and saying like you see the dilemma while showing both Martina's key card and Kate's keychain. This scene was great. I love Mr. Curtin as the mustache twirling mastermind interrogating in his own style closing and opening his hands showing a Mr. Benedict action figure. By the way where did he where did he, did he make that? I don't really understand how he also shows number two and Rhonda that, that it confuses me but okay fine. I still liked this scene. Sticky trying to fight off the influence of the Whisperer, also trying to stall time while having messenger duty, and Mr. Curtin noticing way sooner than Sticky would have anticipated. I just love everything involving Mr. Curtin in this episode, because he's always one step ahead of everyone, and that is one of the great ingredients to a good villain. I also love Tony Hill's acting during the confrontation with Rainey. You know, when Rainey is saying, there's a good person in there, you only do this because you're hurt and you want to take revenge on the world, there's still good in you, I know it to be true. And you know, I believed it. Rainey and Mr. Curtin spent a lot of time together this season, Mr. Curtin had the time 
time to study Rainy, but Rainy too must have picked up a few things about how he works and how he sees the world. Oh, and I absolutely adore the little twist where Mr. Curtin and Mr. Benedict are finally standing face to face and you think Nathaniel's gonna make a point about seeing the best in people while telling that story about Tommy who wants to be a good dancer, remember? What you think this scene is setting up is Mr. Curtin convincing his brother, hey man, you were always the one to see the best in people, why can't you see the same in me? It looked like they were setting that up, but then boom, it's turned around, he actually was telling this story to make his brother laugh and put him down because of his narcolepsy. This is a brilliant turn of events and a nice play on audience's expectations. In one of the final confrontations in this episode when Rainy is trying out his brilliant tell a joke and hope for the best plan, Constance pretty much sums up how I feel about this finale. She says, this is what we're reduced to. Still, there's good ingredients in this episode that I enjoyed, scenes that have me fascinated, but as I said before, it's a big bag of mixed for me. It leaves a sour taste in my mouth when looking back to this show. But you know, who knows what this show will become? We obviously are getting a second season judging by the ending. There are also three sequels within the book series, so unless it's cancelled, hey, we're probably going to get another season. I'm thinking about wrapping this up. Thank you so much for watching. I'm curious, what did you think of this episode? Be sure to let me know in the comment section. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the idea of discussing Disney+, Plus contact with us, that red button looks familiar, right? And if you're interested in thoughts on previous episodes, it's all in the description or you can browse the channel page. Did you like this video? Then be sure to consider giving that a click. Thanks, for now, have a wonderful day and see ya.